This video will help you with installing the Elite Mod for Dawn of War 2. The screen will showcase each section that we're going to discuss. Timestamps are available in the description. Step 1. Buy the correct game on Steam. So I know that sounds a bit ridiculous, but just to make it clear, you only need Dawn of War 2 Retribution here. You do not need the base Dawn of War 2 game, nor Chaos Rising, nor anything else. You only need Dawn of War 2 Retribution. So if we type in Dawn of War 2 to the, the Steam store, you're going to be able to see it at the top here, Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Do not be fooled with Dawn of War 2 Retribution The Last Stand. Yes, it's cheaper, that's because it only has one of three game modes that is in Dawn of War 2 Retribution. There's the single player campaign, there is multiplayer PvP, and there is a horde mode called The Last Stand. This is just the horde mode. If you buy this, you cannot use the mod. You must buy Dawn of War 2 Retribution. There will be a link to this in the description down below. This is all you need. You do not need any DLC. If I click onto this, we can now see that I actually don't own much of the DLC. There's a load. Don't think that these race packs are required to play the races. These are purely aesthetic. You get all the races automatically as soon as you buy the game. You only need to buy the base game. Do not spend £130 on this package. <laughs> if you've got that much money, donate it to me. Okay, that's all for step one, folks. Oh, and just be aware, pirated copies of the game, they're not going to work with a mod. Step two, you need to find a source to download the most up-to-date version for the mod. Three options here. You can go to the Elite Mod website, so let's check that out. Dawnofwar.info is the website. Here you go. So you can go to the forums here. You go to the releases, and at the very top, it's always going to be the most recent patch. So at the moment, when I'm making this, that's patch 2.9.9.1 too many points and you can go down and you can choose one of the links here Google Drive mega link click it and you're gonna get a download download now your antivirus might say that this is you know unprotected it could be a virus whatever yeah well it could you're, you're downloading a mod <laughs> it's not it's the elite mod and obviously if there's ever anything like the website being compromised or anything then this would be deleted and there would be a message to everyone via our community discord don't worry about it just bloody download the mod that's how you download it what's an alternative if you don't like using the website the website might be down or anything like that you can go to mod db so mod db have a look for elite mod dawn of war 2 retribution elite mod and then you can go to the files and again at the very top here you got 2.9.9.1 the latest release for the mod you click on that and you can get downloading the correct version okay so what's your third option your third option is to go into discord so if you go to any of my videos you've got the community join the elite mod community through the discord and find other people to play with so click this link sign into your discord open it up bang you're going to be over here you're going to be in the dawn of war 2 elite mod community server so then you're in announcements you click over here for the pinned messages these are always going to show the most recent patch release so you can click here and straight away gives you a link to the website and it gives you the different download links for the mod as well so take your pick any of those three work it's up to you which one you find the most convenient just bear that in mind so we're on to the next step now you've actually downloaded the mod and all you've got to do now is run the installer file that gets downloaded and this is going to pop up so you know we're not in the noughties anymore guys this is 2023 you don't have to do any manual file manipulation anymore we've got an installer for you so that's nice so just click next read through all this if you want whatever that's just telling you the patch updates this is the main thing that can cause it to go awry, okay? All you need to do here is make sure that the place that it's installing the mod to is the same place that you actually have the game installed. So if you've installed the game on a different hard drive for whatever reason, 
and the installer doesn't realize that, then when you try to launch the mod, you're going to get a crash to desktop. So how can you know? Go onto your Steam, go into your library, go down to your Donna War 2 Retribution, you see mine's here, go into Properties, and then go into Installed Files, click Browse, and it's going to show you the location where you have the game installed. So if you look over here, it is located for me on my C drive, program file, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Donna War 2 Retribution. Why don't we copy that? And now when we go to our installer, we can see, well, I mean, if you want, you can just copy paste it back. And uh, it's going to be the same thing. But even without that, it's correctly chosen the correct area. So all you need to do now is click install. Boom. It is going to get installing. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, welcome to 2023, folks. Nice and easy for ya. Now, when this is installed, what you're going to have is, you're going to have the ability to play the base game by clicking here in your Steam library. This is useful if you want to play single player campaign. If you want to play The Last Stand, this is good. But if you want to play multiplayer and you want to play on the mod, you go to your desktop and there will be a shortcut created for you for the Elite Mod. Double click this shortcut and you will get the Elite Mod to launch. So let's allow it to load for a second. Shouldn't take too long. And then when you get in game and you go over to here, you can see in the top left, Dawn of Water Retribution Elite version 2.9.9.1. We currently have a demon hunter. We change this wallpaper and the model on front quite regularly, so if you don't see him, don't worry if you're downloading this in a year and it's a it's an orc war boss or something. But this is how you tell. And then to play a game, this is basically it. You're on the elite mod, guys. That's it. So to play a game, you go over to the multiplayer tab, custom games, and then you look in public. And there you go. We've got some other lobbies with people already. The infamous Vengutron always hosting lobbies, this guy. Now, the find game feature does work, however, very few people play it, so you might struggle to find games. This is an automated matchmaking. Um, but you can't find games of people playing the vanilla game when you use this. So maybe if you're doing like a private event with your friends or something, you could use this to randomize things. But generally, you're not going to find games of it. Use the public game feature. If you want to host a private game against the AI, you can using this. And you can invite your friends here as well, but the invitation feature is a little bit buggy. Sometimes it might not work, it's just something. It's a bug that Relic caused and they never fixed it, so what can you do, folks? But that's basically it. You've downloaded the mod and now you can play. If you want to optimize your settings and make sure you've got, well, a few of the bonus things that you can see in the or original contents list, then stay tuned and we'll talk about them next. But otherwise, technically, this is all you need. You've downloaded the mod. Go get playing. And see you on the battlefield. For the rest of you, we're going to move on to the next few steps. Okay, the most important thing you need to do straight away if you're going to be playing a lot of Dawn of War 2 is you need to install the small fix by NAR for the sound bug. The sound bug is a really annoying bug. Maybe 1 in 5, 1 in 10 games before you finish them, all the sound's going to go or just the music's going to go and you're going to get partial sound and then within a matter of a minute you're going to have a crash to desktop it is a nightmare that relic left us with but we seem to have found a very good fix to it so if you click this link here which is in the description then you're going to get to a uh, an article on mod db that was written by one of the team members and it's going to detail how to fix this bug. If you have any problems doing this process, it is quite long-winded, but it's very self-explanatory. If you've got any problems that you need troubleshooting, join the community Discord down below and ask away in the technical discussion section, and we will aim to help you out. Okay, just another thing to be aware, guys, you've got the tooltip no range bug that can pop up quite often. So you'll know that you've got this bug if you're playing the game and you're looking at the UI for your units and instead of having information, you've got hashtag 0101 blah blah blah. And then it says no range. Now this occurs for two reasons. The main reason is you're trying to run the game in a language that isn't English. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have support for any other language other than English, so this bug will trigger. 
Secondly, you may have a UCS file from another mod installed in the same location as the Elite mod. And if the two UCS are in the same folder, they're going to try and overwrite one another and you're going to get this bug. So follow the link here. So go to common, Dawn of War 2, game assets, local, English, and look for another UCS that isn't from the Elite mod. You either delete it, or like it says here, you, all you need to do to prevent the error is remove the other UCS from the folder. So if you don't want to delete it, you could just create another temporary folder to put the UCS in. And then when you want to play the other mod, you can take it out and you can swap it with the Elite mod UCS. And that, because you're going to have this issue no matter what mod you're playing for Dawn of War 2. So that's a way to resolve this bug if you get it. Remember, if you do have any technical problems, join the community discord and ask away in technical discussion and we will help you out. Alright, so for step six, we're going to optimize some in-game settings. So let's go to the options here. So the main thing really to talk about here is grid keys. I think this is the most important one. So you can choose to have them on or off. What grid keys is, is it makes all your hotkeys go to the left hand side of the keyboard, which is so much easier for abilities and that's why I have it on. Um, so for example, by default, things like repair is going to be on the R key because it's repair, it begins with R, but things like a shotgun blast might be on the S key, uh, so ability grenades might be on the G key because it's you know it's meant to be based on the name but it's very confusing because the grenade the abilities are all over the place because things are named you know there's no consistency to that grid keys instead means the first ability of a squad is q the second ability is w the third ability is e if you look at your keyboard and you've got a qwerty keyboard that's very simple your fingers are going to be near one two three four five anyway to select your units so moving them down to hit q w e r t for abilities is very convenient the main problem with grid keys is that the repair hot key goes to h so i bind that to a, a key on my mouse if you don't have a gaming mouse or an extra key on your mouse then you might want to manually um, change your hotkeys which we'll discuss in the next section otherwise there's a couple of other settings here you can Click this to turn on or off the ability to download and show other players custom badges so you can customize your badge and have it on some of your units and your headquarters. Most people's are going to be fine, they're going to be law friendly, but you know this is a multiplayer game. There's going to be some phallic badges and there's going to be some Nazi badges. Just, you know, that's going to be the case. So if you, I don't know, if you're not ready for that, then you can turn it off and you will not see those things. You can toggle this to decide whether it makes you show the hero selection before you enter a game. The rest of these don't really matter too much. Oh, turn off squad event queues. I don't find this useful. It puts a pop-up on the top left of the game when like a unit gets attacked, but on this side you've got other UI that's telling you. I think this is very obtrusive. I think after just a couple of hours of playing you won't want this. Advanced sub selection is really interesting. I don't use it, but I think it has value. If you've got multiple squads selected at once, you can use the tab to specifically command only one of them without deselecting the wider group of squads. For me, if I wanted to command the second guy, rather than having free selected and tabbing to the second squad, I'd just press my hotkey two to select the second unit, so I don't really care. But it's something you can consider. For graphics and audio, this is all going to be pretty dependent on your rig. I wouldn't really worry about it too much. The only thing I'd point out with the graphics is rain detail. I just turn rain off. I think the rain looks really bad in this game, but even ignoring whether it looks good or bad, the other thing is it's very, very obstructive. It, it's it's very hard to see through the rain on in this game. Um, and it, yeah, it, it just hurts. It, it can obscure the UI. I think it worsens the gameplay and it doesn't look good enough to me to be worth it. I would recommend turning that off. Everything else, it's up to you. I have everything on max settings except soft particles, just because for me, I don't think that's very valuable to me aesthetically, but it puts a lot of pressure on my rig and I just don't think it's worth the health of my rig, to be quite honest, so I have it off. That is all for optimizing your settings. Let us move on to personalizing your hotkeys. So let's say the in-game grid keys aren't doing it for you for whatever reason. Maybe you're in real-time strategy heathen and you want to use WASD to move your camera rather than edge panning. Hmm? Is that you? Really? We don't do that in RTS. You need to get good, boy. Okay, fine. 
you can do that. It's, it's your choice. You need to go to here. So documents, my games, Dawn of War 2 Retribution settings, key defaults dot lure. Double click this. Open it with notepad. And you can go in here and you can change your key defaults. Woo! Isn't that amazing? So there you go. You can change them however you want. I mean, crack on. Go crazy. There, you've got literally every ability hotkey for everything in the goddamn game. So go wild. And all you do is you save as. And when you save as, uh, you, you remove the underscore. And then that's it. You're done. I don't want to edit my key defaults, so that's that. But yeah, you just... So you save as, and then... Rename, removing the underscore like that, and and hit enter, and you'll be you'll be in a good a good time with your new hotkeys. All right, and then the final thing that you might want to consider doing is downloading the extra map pack link. So there's a link to this in the description down below, literally to this forum uh, link, and then then you've got your Google Drive. Basically, it's a set of optional maps that aren't in the default game because they're just not, they, they kind of like blow it where they increase the size of the, size of the mod. We don't think they're very competitive maps, blah, blah, blah. But if you want to use them, you can. Just be aware that most players will not have these maps. So if you attempt to launch a game with someone who doesn't have the map and they don't realize you're playing on a, a custom map, it's going to crash the game or it's going to cause a desync. So you need to know which maps are in the default mod and which are from the extra map pack link so that you can tell people, well, hold on, do you have the extra map pack link? If you're just playing with your friends locally, that's not going to be a problem so long as you've all got this. But if you're playing with randoms online, it's something to be aware of.